All right, so today we're gonna to finish up chapter five about normal distributions, and we're gonna look at normal approximations to binomial distributions. So we looked at binomial in 4.2. So let's review the proper properties of a binomial experiment. So remember, we have to have N independent trials. We should have two possible outcomes. And we usually looked at these as success and failure. Our third is remember we have our probability of success. we said was lowercase p. And then that gave us the probability of failure q equals one minus p. Okay. And remember, since we have independent trials, um, our probability of success p is the same for each trial. Okay. And when we found the probability of event X occurring, we had our formula N combination X times P to the X power times Q to the N minus X power. Okay. So if we were to do that, if a surgical procedure has an 85% chance of success, and a doctor performs the procedure on 10 patients, what is the probability of exactly two successful surgeries? So we have our probability of success is 0.85, which means our probability of failure is 0.15. And we're looking for 10 patients, so that's our N, and we wanna find the probability that X equals two. So for the probability that X equals two, if we plug into our formula, we have 10 combination two times 0.85 to the second power times 0.15 to the 10 minus two power or eight. And what's nice about this is then we can just plug that in to our calculator and find that probability. Also remember when we looked at binomial and we had a nice p-value, so 0.85, we could also just look at our table. Um, I don't have that table with me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in the calculator. And here we get approximately 0 0.0000. 0. One more zero, eight, three, three. So a really small probability. Okay. All right. So what if we change that? The surgical procedure has an 85% chance of success and a doctor performs the procedure on 150 patients. So our probability of success is still the same. Our Q is still 0.15. But now our n is 150, and we want to find the probability that x is less than 148. Okay. So this would mean we're finding the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. We're going to continue doing that until we get to the probability of 147 less the probability, whoops, that would just be it, because 147, so it's less than, sorry, I was thinking I said equal to. All right, so we'd have to add those all up. What's nice is we could also do the complement, one minus the probability that X is greater than or equal to 148. But what we're gonna look at now is what if we had, maybe it was N was 1000, okay? So what if n equals 1,000, and we want to find the probability that x is less than 148? 
Well, then you would still have to do all of this and you would actually have to add up all 148 of those probabilities and find them all by hand. Well, that's not realistic. So what we can do is we can transform that into continuous. So we can do a normal approximation for a binomial distribution. So if n times p is greater than or equal to five and n times q is greater than or equal to five, then the binomial random variable x is approximately normally distributed with a mean, remember our mu equals n times p, and a standard deviation of the square root of n times p times q, where n is still the number of independent trials, p is the probability of success, and q is the probability of failure. Okay. So if these rules hold up, then we can change everything into our normal distribution that we've been working with, okay? So for this first one, we're just gonna determine, can we approximate using the normal distribution? So we have 15% of adults in the United States do not make New Year's resolutions. You randomly select 15 adults and ask if he or she made a New Year's resolution. So our P is 0.15, meaning our Q, is 0.85 and our n equals 15. So if we check n times p, we have 0.15 times 15 gives us 2.25. Okay. Is that greater than or equal to 5? The answer is no. So we cannot approximate. using the normal distribution. Because NP is less than five. Okay. So then if we had a problem that did ask us to find the probability, we would have to use the formula that we know from chapter four. All right, let's look at the next one. So over the past five years, 80% of adults in the United States have made and kept one or more New Year's resolutions. So here, our probability of success is 0 0.80. Whoa, sorry, which means the probability of failure is 0 0.20. You randomly select 70 adults, so n equals 70. Um, and ask if he or she kept at least one resolution. So we want to check NP, which is going to be our 70 times 0 0.80, which equals 56. Okay, that's greater than or equal to five, that checks. So now let's check NQ. So we have 70 times 0 0.20, which equals 14, and that checks. So yes, this binomial distribution is approximately normal. Okay. All right, so from that, the binomial distribution is discrete and can be represented by a histogram. So to calculate the exact binomial probability, you can use the binomial formula for each value of x and then add the results, okay? So if I kind of sketch this, and we have like our normal distribution, and I try to make this look a little bit bell curved. Okay, but maybe our data falls like this. And the problem with using the discrete is that there is this overlap that we're not including, or that we are including, so that's too much. And then there's this other side that we're not including with those bars. 
Okay, so it's not quite exact. Okay, it's close, but we want to always be as exact as possible. So what we're going to use is a continuous normal distribution to approximate the binomial probability. You need to move a half unit to the left and right of the midpoint to include all the possible x values in the interval. This is called making a correction for continuity. All right, so we're using a correction of continuity to convert each of the following binomial intervals to a normal distribution interval. So there is a very good table in your book on page 277 that shows each of these scenarios, okay? Um, so the probability of getting between 270 and 310 successes inclusively. So what that interval would be, would be 270 is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 310. Okay. And if we were to sketch that, 270 on the left, 310 on the right, and then we have like our bell curve. Okay. Finding all of that area in between. What the continuity correction is going to do is it's going to have us go just outside that interval by a half. So we're going to go to the left and then we're going to go to the right by a half. Well, when we go to the left, that means we're subtracting. So this becomes 269.5. And when we go to the right, it becomes 310.5. So using the continuity correction, and I'm going to represent that with an arrow with CC above it, our new probability becomes 269 and a half is less than X, which is less than 310 and a half. Okay, we lo lose that equality when we switch. Okay. All right, so now let's look at the... B, we have the probability of getting at most 54 successes. So at most would be when X is less than or equal to 54, because it could equal it. I'm gonna kind of sketch that. So 54, we're shading everything below, but we also wanna include 54. Since we wanna include that number, we're going to go just outside of the interval for a continuity correction, which means this is going to be 54.5. Okay. So our continuity correction becomes the probability that X is less than 54.5. Okay. All right. So when you don't have an equal sign, it kind of changes it up a little. So now let's look at C, the probability of getting less than 68. So the probability that X is less than 68. Well, now we're not equal to 68. So we don't really care if we go outside that interval because we wanna be underneath it, okay? So when there's no equality with it, you're actually going to go underneath the interval and you're gonna keep it a true statement. So this continuity correction becomes 67.5. So X is less than 67.5 because of that midpoint, because we wanna be underneath 68A, not above it, okay? So, the best rule that I can give you to make sure you go the right direction. So equal, you're gonna go outside the interval. Okay. If it's an inequality, make the statement true. Okay. 
And continuity correction is probably the hardest part of this section. So I highly recommend looking at that table on page 277, and I will probably actually take a screenshot of it and add it into the modules. Okay. All right. So once we've done that continuity correction, we can then go through and find probabilities. Okay. So we have some steps. Um, I'm going to try to abbreviate these. And actually, I'm going to just go down and do this in symbols so that way it's even shorter. All right, so our first step, we want to specify or determine N, P, and Q, which is what we have been doing so far. And then we want to check, can we do a normal distribution approximation? Okay. And the way we check that, we want to check does NP greater than or equal to five and is NQ greater than or equal to five. If it is, we can move forward. If it's not, you have to use that binomial distribution formula. Okay. All right, then we're going to find the mean. So find mu, which equals NP and the standard deviation, which equals the square root and PQ. Okay. Fourth step, we're gonna use our continuity correction. Okay. So that's when we're doing the plus or the minus 0 0.5 to the X value. All right, now we're going to find the z-score. So z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, and this is using the x value from the continuity correction. Okay. And then our sixth step, we're going to find the probability using use the standard normal table. So I'm going to say table four to find the probability using our same rules as before. Okay. All right, so we're going to do this first example. So 5% of adults in the United States are planning to purchase a 3D TV in the next two years. So 5%, I'm gonna go ahead and write that, would be our probability of success. You randomly select 125 adults. So Q equals 0 0.95 and our N equals 125. Okay. Then you ask them if they're going to plan on purchasing a 3D TV in the next two years. What is the probability that more than nine respond yes? We want to find the probability that x is greater than nine. Okay. All right, so we've figured out n, p, and q. So the next thing we want to do is we want to find n, p, and n, q. Okay, I highly re recommend you write these down because if you forget to do that step, it can completely mess up your problem. So n times p. So we have 125 times 0 0.05, which gives us 6.25. So that checks out. And then if we take 125 times 0.95, we get 118.75, which also checks. So that means we can do a normal approximation. So I'm going to write normally distribute or normally approximate. All right. So now that we've done that, we need to find our mean and our standard deviation. So mu 
equals n times p, which we already found when we did our test. So our mean is 6.25. And then our standard deviation is going to be the square root of n, which is 125, times our p, 0 0.05, times q, 0.95. And that is approximately 2.44. Let's do 2.44. All right, so now we need to look at our probability and do our continuity correction. So the probability that x is greater than nine, since there is no equality, remember we wanna make a true statement so for a continuity correction, we're gonna do the probability that X is greater than, so to be greater than nine, that would be 9.5. Okay. And now we wanna find our Z score. So Z equals our X value 9.5 minus our mean 6.25 divided by 2.44. and we get approximately 1.33. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.33 equals, remember we're finding the greater than, that means we're finding the area to the right. So we're gonna do one minus and find the probability that Z is less than 1.33, which would be um, 0.9082. So our probability 0 0.0918 is our solution. Okay. So the thing about doing the binomial approximation, yes, it's a little bit more work because you have to do some different tests, find your mean and your standard deviation, and then do the continuity correction. But when you get to the actual finding of the probability, those steps are the same as what we did in 5.2. Okay. All right, so I highly encourage you to try the next two problems. Um, we will go over those in class.